Hi there, and welcome to the Fact of Lounge podcast, your faculty development podcast, homegrown right out of Dalhousie Medicine, New Brunswick, but of course open to audiences Dalhousie-wide and also around the world. I'm your host, Dr. Sarah Gander, and I'm a pediatrician in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. And can you believe it? This podcast is almost four years old. That's right. We started in 2019, well before the pandemic, and all of a sudden when podcasts were so cool, we were before it all. So I'm so happy to be back bringing you more content. Um, We are affectionately calling this Fact Dev Lounge 2.0. So if you remember or have listened to our original episodes, we created this podcast to tackle faculty development topics that just don't necessarily draw a crowd. So for example, like why I hate teaching and ones that required a little bit of an edge, like why millennials seem so entitled, and then also allowed us to bring guests to you from as far as the UK, Toronto, and even our own Miramichi, New Brunswick. So here we are, back to a new season, um, if you will, and narrowing in on topics that are applicable far and wide um, as more and more universities are creating distributed campuses like ours, um, but also keeping it close to home in our own lived experiences with the distributed campus, distributed learning sites, uh, longitudinal integrated clerkships and the like. And so I think we have lots of stories to tell, lots of experiences, strengths and challenges that we can share with other sites, especially since we um, have learned it's so exciting that Cape Breton's going to be opening a Dalhousie campus. And I certainly know that colleagues of mine in other provinces are involved in similar initiatives. So I think we have lots of things to share and collaborate on. Um, So Listeners, you are used to having a guest join me, but today you just get me as we launch into our new season with the topic I think um, is useful for everybody, like why to embrace new beginnings. We have our podcast 2.0. It is spring here in New Brunswick. It's March of 2023 that we're recording this. And may I just say... I feel like a lot of the COVID pandemic shenanigans are largely behind us. So, you know, COVID is kind of like that nasty friend or family member that comes over for a few days and stays with you. And it kind of seems okay for a bit. And like, we were probably due to figure out our relationship, but they aren't leaving. And now we really can't imagine our life without them. So such a weird feeling, but like, do you even remember not wearing masks to work? Like it's hard to even picture that. So with New Beginnings, we have built this nasty COVID freeloader and in-law suite, and we're getting back to business, but we're tired. So tired, burnt out maybe? Is this burnout? Is this long COVID that they're talking about? What the heck? I have no idea. I know everyone listening recognizes the state of things. It isn't just us. It's our friends, our families, our kids, the teachers, the admins, the techs, everyone. So let's talk about how we can newly begin to make this mythological promise of self-care. I will take it back to what I know in my work life, which is the effect of adversity and as a pediatrician, specifically adverse childhood experiences, which we care a lot about in peds now. And the reality is adversity, trauma, unpredictability, loss of control is what we've all experienced over the last few years. And what we know to be true of adverse childhood experiences or the adversity in childhood is that really the antidote is positive childhood experiences or positivity. And when I'm talking to you guys about like what we've experienced over the last couple of years, it's not really the positivity that is that toxic kind, you know, like that lady from the old children's show with like the lamb puppet, puppet, like lamb chop, I think their name was, right? It's not that like, you know, pretend that everything's okay. It's, you know, or that super inauthentic kind where you just like push everything down and just smile and say like, it's fine. It's fine. It's great. We'll get through this together. You know, that kind of business. It's really committing to building in what you know to be your positive because you know yourself the best. So I was thinking that maybe we could just think about that. Like if I talk the way through it for me, maybe you can see where you relate, but you know, we need to figure out this energy deficit situation. You know, I know, I know we have call, we have clinic, we have staff shortages, we have our kids activities, we have aging parents, we have our own health issues perhaps, but 
let's take it back to what we learned in medical school and like, what are our actual batteries? Like what is, what actually is the charge that keeps us going? And like to dork out for you guys, it's our mitochondria, right? And so like what fuels our actual batteries? Do you remember? It turns out it's all the things that you already know are really good for you. So like nutritious food, nature and fresh air, gentle movement of your body, connection, sleep, hydration. So like, let's just break that down for a second. So like nutritious foods, I know, I know if I dare say like meal plan or food logging, I'm going to get my tire slashed in the parking lot. But how about this? Like looking at the hospital store and seeing that now they sell Nella's there or zesty lemon meals. So just kind of keeping our eyes open for where there are opportunities to make a choice that might better fuel our body and be better for sort of that path towards recharging ourselves and getting back to a better place. Because the healthier options may actually exist out there or the equivalent if you're not necessarily in our hospital. So the nature and fresh air thing, like, again, look around. Rockwood Park is right down the street. What about that walking meeting? It only takes 15 minutes to walk outside of the doctor's lounge down the road to University Avenue and back, and that 15 minutes could totally change your day. And if you noticed, this is happening tomorrow, so it will be in the past by the time you're listening to this, but at our MSO meeting, there's actually an agenda item for redoing the doctor's lounge. And am I the only one who thought, okay, walking desks for team meetings and a yoga stretching corner and a meditation quiet room. Hello, like, let's just do this and get into the now. So connection is a really big one. So, you know, this isn't just, um, you know, reaching out for the Zoom call or again, putting our face into our phones and the screens and just texting people. This is like actual connection. And like our St. John Medical Society has upped their game significantly. Did you go to the apple picking in the fall, the skating this winter? Now in March, there's a comedy night and soon to be a maple syrup tour. Okay. So you don't like your colleagues. You don't want to hang out with them. It's fine. No problem. But maybe reach out to that friend or cousin that you've been missing. And I know that you'll feel better afterwards and more recharged to just even have a conversation with somebody who you know loves you. Okay. So I'm driving you crazy. I did say that we didn't want to be toxically positive and all of these sounds, all of these things sound very, you know, yes, 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 sir. We know that. But well, guess what? I know you know the list of things you should or could be doing. So the actual only question here is why aren't you doing them? I actually have the answer. Because frankly, the only reason why any of us do anything is because of the way it'll make us feel. Med school? Feeling. Drink a bottle of wine? Feeling. Rock out to the new Constant Greetings album available on Spotify featuring our own Dr. Steve Robinson on guitar? feeling. So why don't you want to feel good? Because you don't believe it. You don't believe it'll work or you have a stronger belief that you don't have time or that you just can't. So I'm going to flip it on you for a second. What would you tell your patient? What would you tell your best friend? What would you tell your mom? You would say, of course you can. Start small. Show yourself some compassion and just start and maybe just maybe things will get started and start to roll. So with your new beginning and commitment to recharging your batteries, where are you going to start? What's that one little thing? Then you can start to believe that maybe it can happen. So here's another surprise for you. When this podcast episode launches, you will see a newly minted Facebook group called the Fact of Lounge Podcast. So you can actually comment on the post. What is your first little thing for spring? And maybe we can actually start to build that connection where we can start to share ideas so we can all collectively move towards a new beginning recharging our batteries and getting past this culture of burnout and fatigue and, you know, really just look to the future post all of this adversity and into a positive spring. So happy spring, everybody. The time changes behind us and please find us on Facebook with our new um, podcast Facebook group. 
And also share this podcast with your friends. And if you want to be on this podcast as a guest, we would love to hear from you. Our wonderful faculty development lounge folks sent out um, a shout out to um, the faculty with all of our contact to be able to reach out and see if you would like to come on and share your experiences about being a Dalhousie faculty and also specifically around being part of the distributed sites. So take care, everyone, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for listening to the Fac Dev Lounge podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or SoundCloud, and even a comment on some ideas for future podcasts. Thank you very much and have a great day.